Hello, my name is Sergio Angelis, and I'm here at Laman Public Media to do a quick class and overview on how you can use vMix uh, for live streaming or live production here at the studio. So uh, we're currently in the live streaming studio. Uh, the software we want to use is called vMix. It is basically video switching software. So if you're familiar with the physical switchers like the ATEM or the Blackmagic ATEM, um, then you'd be pretty familiar with vMix as it's just a software-based representation of a physical switcher. So why don't we get started? So uh, first thing we want to do is we want to open up vMix. So vMix is this little Rubik's Cube-like icon, or on the far left you can see vMix, or you can just you know, search for vMix here, and you want to open that up. So uh, once you open it up, this is what the user interface looks like. So on the top left, you can create uh, new projects, you can open up existing ones, save them, save as, and the last one. The window here in orange on your left, this is your preview window. So this is uh, whenever you want to preview any cameras before uh, switching them to live. And on the right hand side, this is your live section. So this, anything that you see on the right hand side in this window, this is what will be sent to, to be recorded, to be live streamed for live broadcasts, any of that sort of thing. The section right down here uh, with your one and two, this is your inputs. So uh, we'll get a little more into what inputs are, but as you add more inputs, they will um, add up here. You can also color code different inputs. Uh, these are the different tabs. If you right click on them, you can actually um, have categories for different things. That way you can categorize your inputs. On the right hand side, you have your virtual audio mixer. So right now, because we only have one, one technically one output, which is our master output. But as we add more inputs, we'll see uh, more um, audio inputs here. Um, so why don't we get started with inputs? So why don't we click add input? And as you see, you'll be able to select a variety of different inputs. Um, we have video, so these are any type of video files. If you wanna have a DVD, you can. A list, this can just be a list of different audio or audio uh, files. Cameras, so if you are using uh, vMix here at Loma Public Media in the big TV studio, you would want to select either the Decklink Duo 2, 3, or 4. Those are the cameras that we have in the studio. For this purpose, we're going to use the MDI cameras. So this does have native built-in support for MDI. Uh, and we're going to add all three. So we're gonna go one, two, three. And we're also going to um, add an image because we want to uh, kind of you know have a little overlay just in case, you know, when the show starts. Um, and we're also gonna select audio because we want, I want a specific song that we want to, to play. Um, lastly, there's a lot of, you know, I won't go into a lot of detail here. Um, there's also some really cool titles. So these are pre-made lower thirds. Um, you can also always make your own, but these are just kind of built in. Um, for the sake of this class, let's just pick Title 13, Wipeout Blue, say OK. We'll close this, but we'll get back to that. So as you see, as I've added inputs, I now have five or six total inputs. On the right-hand side, I have four total audio inputs, so one for each NDI camera and one for the, the music that I chose. Um, you also notice that some of these are are colored blue uh, and because right now we're all in all if I do want to categorize you know where my inputs are I can go into the settings and specify red so now if I go in red I can see you know, all my so I do like to categorize uh, my inputs 
That way um, I know, um, you know where they are and I can quickly access them if I need to. So uh, as I mentioned, vMix is video switching software. So as you can see here, we now have two cameras, uh, one on our live feed on the right hand side and one on the preview, which is the left. If you want to uh, cut between uh, the left, the preview and the live, you have a variety of different effects here. So you can cut, you can fade, um, you can do a cube. If you want to change any of these, you simply hit the little down arrow and you can change the type of uh, transition. So in this case, let's do a barn door because why not? Um, but you know, I really like the fade. So we'll keep the fade there. Um, also in the center here, we have a manual fade. Um, this takes whatever is top most button here as your transition. So in this case, as I slowly pull on it, it can fade, and once you're done, you let it go. This is more akin to traditional switchers. Um, you also have these one, two, three, and four. Uh, these are your overlay channels. So for example, let's say you want to have um, you know, this graphic um, as an overlay. While you could just put it into preview and, and fade it over, um, if you want to have it as an overlay, you actually want to press one on it. So this just puts the graphic in this case on top of the current camera that's currently, you know, in your live feed. Um, there's four of them because layer one is the lower most layer and four is the highest most layer. So if I were to put this, um, lower third on top of number four, you can see now it, it goes on top of layer one. Um, so you can stack and have up to four different overlays, which is very helpful. Um, so that's what these one, two, and three are for. You also notice that within the inputs here, you can cut, if I want, for example, to cut to this camera specifically, I can just hit cut from here as well. Um, so vMix gives you a variety of different options here. Um, right now with camera one being selected, you can see that right now we have audio on for input one. Um, if I turn this off, um, you'll see the color here changes and also that no audio will be transferred over to master. So you always want to make sure that you have audio in your input so that, you know, you have audio in your stream or your production. If I click audio here, you also notice it turns green and you can also manually change the gain on that specific input, um, which is pretty cool. Um, you also notice that as I cut, the audio for this respective camera changes. Now, if the camera, you know, if the inputs that you're working with all have the same audio source, then, you know, that shouldn't be an issue. But let's say you're only using one camera, for example, camera one, this one, um, and all the audio is coming into this one. So when you cut, you don't want the audio to transition there. So what do you do? You go into your settings and you turn off automatically mix audio. You do this for all of your video sources. And what this means is now you have to manually mix it. So because audio is now on, if I cut to a different camera, the audio will stay on coming in from camera number one. This can be both good and bad, again, because now you have to remember to turn it off if you ever need to. But we like having it on. Um, if you want to play music, you can also need to hit audio, hit play. Now we can see that we have music playing and it's coming out of the speakers. So to control the volume of the speakers, you can use the mixer here. Uh, you don't want to go too loud because you don't want the people outside the studio to hear you. Um, I always like to hit loop. That way the song keeps going um, and stuff like that. So let's assume we have a production going. I want to start off with this one and then I'm going to transition to this camera right here. So what I would probably do here is I would do a 
I would turn on audio here, do a quick fade, and now lower the music slightly. And then you can turn it off here. If you want to modify any of the titles, you right click on it and hit title editor. And now you can change the headline. So, um, Sergio Angeles, and the description is the mix class instructor. So you can see now it's you know modified it and if I press one we now have a nice beautiful lower third that comes up on the screen. So now that you know you have all this stuff set up how, you, how do you actually record this stuff or live stream it or whatever. So on the bottom bar you got a variety of different options the first one is record so if you hit the gear icon this brings up uh, your recording setup. So you always want to make sure that you change the file name and the folder of where you're recording. Ideally, you want to record to volume F and you want to give it a name. So in this case, Sergio B Mix Class. I'll put it in here, hit save. And when, um, when I'm ready, I just press OK. You want to make sure you record in MP4. While you can change the bit rate, we normally recommend staying at 1920 by 1080, so 1080p HD at five megabit per second bit rate. So you want to hit OK, and you'll see now it adds an output to the recording channel. So when I hit record, any audio that is coming in, so if I start this song again, oh, that's not the song. If I start the song again, you'll now see the audio is coming in to both the output and the recording. So very important that you want to make sure that that's happening because you don't want your recording to not have audio. So next thing is external. If you ever want to go live on television uh, here at Loma Public Media, all you need to do is hit external. We already have it configured so that you can go live to television. Of course, that requires some additional setup, which we won't go and talk about it here. Next is uh, your stream. So if you click the configure stream button, you can see that there are a variety of, or actually three different profiles. So you can stream to three different places at the same time from VMAX. That does take additional hardware resources, but we have a pretty beefy streaming PC, so you can handle it without a problem. Uh, in terms of destination, you can choose whether it's uh, Vimeo, YouTube, um, or whatever. All you need to do is put in the stream key and make sure that you're streaming at H.264, 1080p, 4.5 megabits per second. When you're ready to start streaming, you just hit start one. Or if you're streaming to multiple destinations, you can hit start all to stream to three places at the same time. Multicorder is pretty cool. Uh, Multicorder allows you to record different inputs at the same time so that you can have a backup of that specific footage if you need to have one. So the way it works is we want to configure it. We will first want to make sure to change the recording folder. We'll just put it in our VMix class, make sure it changes. We want to make sure it's MP4 with video bit rate of five. And here we get to choose what inputs we want to record. So if I click on all these three NDI cameras, all of these cameras will be recorded at the same time. So we have backup footage. When you're ready to do that, you just hit start and it will start recording those cameras individually. So now we're recording four things at the same time. The actual output or whatever is being live streamed, as well as the individual cameras. When, and then lastly, which I kind of like, is this playlist. So this allows you to kind of build your own playlist. So you can select what inputs you want on your playlist. And let's say we want to go here, we're going to move this up top. So this is going to now loop between all these inputs every five seconds. So when you're ready, you hit start. So you can see it, you know, there's, it's uh, going to move to the next one and then the next one. So it's just a really simple way if you want, um, you know, just something to be automated and you don't necessarily need someone back here um, to, you know, run, run VMix for production. When you're ready to stop with this, you just hit stop. 
One of the other things I really like also about vMix is that you can have custom layouts. Um, so what does that mean? So if you go to add input, go to color, and I like to create one for black, say okay. Then we go into our settings for our input and we go to layers in multi-view and you can see that we now have different configurations for different cameras. So if we want a side-by-side, -side, we simply click on the one that we want and we say, I want camera one on that one and camera two on this one. And now you have a pre-made, you know, side-by-side -side layout. There's pips, you know, all kinds of different stuff um, for you to do. Um, also handy, you can also click these and move them wherever you want. Of course, that destroys what the multi-view is, but so be it, um, just kind of nice. So now you have a side-by-side -side layout if you ever want one. Um, if you go into the settings for your inputs, uh, you know, there's a variety of different stuff that you can see here. You can color adjust, um, you can do chroma keying if you want, you can do color correction, um, you know, if you really want to. Um, position, this also lets you change the position of the footage. Um, Multi-view, which is what we talked to. Triggers is really cool because it allows you to automate certain things, but that will be in a different class. Um, and then lastly, if it is a P2Z camera, like the one that we have here, I can connect directly to the camera and then simply control it directly from vMix, which is pretty darn cool. You have similar settings on the audio side. You can increase your gain for your respective inputs. Um, you can enable an equalizer. There's compressors and noise gate if you want to play around with those. Uh, so now I'm getting done with multi-quarter and I'm going to stop recording and that is a great first start to vMix 101 and how you can use vMix for your productions here at Alma Public Media. Thanks for watching.